Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us here with my good friend Benny on Cigar Universe Indonesia. We're very happy to have you. Darren, yeah. nice to have you here. The pleasure is mine. Uh, great event last night. It was fun. Yes, the cigars as well, all the friends, new friends you met. Thank you. Yeah, every day we're meeting lots of people here. Okay. Straight to the question, basically. Uh, what were you before principal cigar? Well, I'm an antique dealer. I still am. I deal in uh, like antique paper and documents um, and, and other things, too. Uh, I think the only job I ever really had was I worked in a pet shop when I was in uh, junior high school, I think, a long time ago. Okay. But yeah, I've been in antiques and then cigars for a long time now. You were residing in... I grew up on Long Island in New York. Ah, okay. And uh, then I lived in Delaware for about 12 years and... Now I've been in Nashville, Tennessee for uh, over 20 years. Okay. Yeah. So tell us a bit more about your uh, business and cigar. Well, we, um, we're a real craft producer. You know, we, uh, we make really tiny runs of cigars. We're, we're mostly a non-U.S. company in that most of our distribution is outside of the U.S. Um, I like to uh, sell cigars in places where I like to hang out, which is why I'm here in Indonesia with you guys. Yep. And uh, yeah, in a nutshell, we're just a, a very focused, high-end craft producer that puts a lot of attention into the product from, you know, from the branding all the way down to the experience. You know, we're, uh, we're really hands-on in every aspect of things. Do you remember your first cigar? I don't. Yeah, people ask me often. I, I really have no idea. It, it was probably in the early 90s somewhere. Mm. But um, I have no idea. I don't. I just don't recall. I mean, I just I, you know, I, I'm always traveling, looking for antiques and buying stuff. And in those travels, you know, oftentimes people would give me cigars. And uh, but I, I just have no. It wasn't like an aha moment where I took a puff and it changed my life. I, you know, I just sort of eased into it, and it was a, it was a gradual process. Ah, yeah. I recall this is your tenth. Uh, mm -hmm. And the first year of Branchable Cigars, can you tell us about it? Yeah, we uh, founded the company 10 years ago in 2013, so um, it's a big year. I mean, um, we the main thing is that we have, uh, to celebrate that milestone, we, we created 10 new releases uh, for the 10th anniversary. But they're all like significant product releases. They're not just like a line extension or something small, like a little limited thing. I mean, they're all like, you know, carefully thought through. Uh, significant uh, cigars that are that are all coming out this year. I think two of which we've launched so far. So mm -hmm. there's a lot to come for the rest of the year. So basically, how many uh, sub uh, products do you have? We have a lot of products because you know we we try to have something for everyone. I mean, there, there's definitely a similarity among a lot of our product line, but um, we really do try to have things to fit into the slots to satisfy uh, a diverse group of smokers. Um, you know, we have Accomplice, which is like our mid-range. It's what we smoked last night. Um, then Aviator Series is our limited ongoing production. Yeah. So, you know, we, we always make aviators, but in, in very small uh, quantities. And um, then we have something called Archive Collection, which is um, anything where we're using vintage materials and the packaging and the design of the product, a actual vintage materials. Um, and then we have Angelique, which is a sweet tip product. Um, we have uh, a few other lines. Yeah. Uh, yes, I was actually uh, paying attention to your Saint Regis private testing. Attendees were offered cigar from the Aviator series. Yes. What do you think about it? Well, Aviator is um, interesting because you know it. It's a. It's a, they're very dynamic cigars. Like, and the philosophy behind them is dynamic. It's. You know, cigars are, are changing and different all the time. And, and when we, Aviator is where we started. And what I realized early on was that, you know, it's not like you make a cigar and then you have your recipe and you make it till the end of time, right? I mean, these things are always changing. Access to tobacco is changing. The tobacco that their people are producing is changing. The growing seasons are different. So it's already a, a very dynamic thing. And um, I figured rather than fight that system and try to just create a, a super uh, stagnant cigar, Let's work with it and, and hopefully ride that wave to making always the best cigar we can ever make. So what makes aviators different is that there are general characteristics that they're all, they all tend to have and are supposed to have. Like they all tend to be medium body. They all tend to be, uh, you know, very flavorful, medium plus flavor wise. They all, most importantly, are tend to be very complex. 
but you know we're not afraid to tweak the blends and err on the side of being a little bit different if we think it can be a better cigar going from production to production versus maybe not making as good a cigar and having the exact same product so you know if if we if we discover some great new tobacco that works within the blend and we we want people to be able to enjoy it we'll make that decision that okay the cigar can be a little bit different this time hopefully if you like it one production you'll always like it right it's not like it's an enormous departure but we're definitely open to change in the blend change slight changes in the flavor profile um always hoping to deliver that that really good experience cool yeah. basically for the new uh those who wants to try uh Russia cigar for the first time what would you recommend well most of what we do is sort of right in what i call that goldilocks zone right like th- you get a lot of new smokers and they they say well I, i'm i've never smoked give me something light maybe they start out with some connecticut's and and if they decide that they're into cigars then their tastes often go right to the top you know and they start smoking really spicy stuff but if they really stay with it and and their their palate expands yeah. their tastes tend to settle like right in the middle which is sort of where we live right because that's that's the place where you can deliver uh, you know an experience that ha- really has depth to it it's harder to do at the top and that's harder to do at the yeah. bottom so honestly for a young smoker because we're making cigars that are not you know blowing out anyone's palates and that have a lot to offer maybe a young s- smoker is not going to experience the depth because they're not trained but it's also going to be a an experience that they can enjoy and and it's not going to you know it's not going to be harsh or give them anything negative so there's no like rule about yeah. where a, a smoker should start within principal cigars depends on your palate i mean i'd say maybe smoke you know try try to accomplice accomplice connecticut accomplice classic only because the price point is a little more accessible than aviator but if that's not an obstacle to a person I mean, Aviator is a great place to start as well. It's not like going to be overbearing for anyone. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if it's in, in the US, let's say. Uh, here, the millennials also starting to like smoking cigars. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure about your area. The United States is nice in that it's... Uh, cigar smoking. Cigar smokers are like in every demographic. You know, you go into a, a cigar lounge, like you'll see everything in there. And that's one thing that's really special about the US. Um, U.S. smokers come in every shape and size and, and appearance um, and age, you know, yeah. you name it. Yeah. I think that that's the one thing that U.S. smokers maybe have over um, some other countries is that uh, it's far more diverse and who's willing to partake in cigars. I, I know some very young people, obviously very old people, like really just everyone. Yeah. Um, it's not that everyone's smoking, but, you know, among smokers, it's it's a wide range of, of humans. I'm touring Southeast Asia. Uh, with the aficionado, why you decided to to work with them? I mean, the main thing is, you know, when you're growing and expanding anywhere, you need you need to engage the people. And these guys made it evident to me uh, early on that they really had their finger on the pulse of, uh, you know, the cigar scene and what the people want, and and really how to engage people on a meaningful level. Uh, and and I've been proven right. I mean, the things we've done. It, already in Bali and here in Jakarta have, uh, I mean, we've engaged people like so, uh, so well, and uh, I'm looking forward to doing more. Um, this is, It's the perfect crew for what, for the message we're trying to send. Okay. Speaking of the country, what's your impression of Indonesia? Ah, I mean, <laughs> sometimes you, you just know you'll like a place and I've always known I would, I would love it here. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I've been correct, <laughs> you know, it's uh Yeah, we were in Bali. I mean, it was a heavy schedule. We had events every day, and same thing here in Jakarta. But uh, I'll be back before the end of the year with um, a little bit more time so that I can uh, take in more of the local flavor than we've had time for on this trip. But it's it's been very, very welcoming, you know, everyone. I've made so many friends in such a short amount of time. Um, yeah, it's been wonderful. Okay, Indonesia has a long history with tobacco. Uh and the local cigar scene is growing. Uh, what's your take about it? I mean, it's it's nice to be in a place where the people, you know, in a sense, have it in their blood, right? Like yeah. there's an understanding. Even if even the people that are maybe new smokers or amateur smokers, they've been around it. They have friends, family that have been around it. They kind of get it. They they get what it's about. They don't think that it's cigarettes or some not. Like they they understand the the culture already. Yeah. That's great. 
and you know we've had there are industry people here that are coming out to all of our events and um or hanging out with us even outside of the events and it's not like i don't want to say that they've been really supportive because i don't think it's support i just think it's that they're happy to be around other like-minded people that are the same boat in the same boat doing the same thing you know sharing war stories and it's uh it's just refreshing like to come to a new market and also have people that maybe in a, a different local way are doing the same thing that you're doing and they're happy to engage and be a part of what we have going on and that's uh that's made it like extra special given your expertise in industry what could be done to make indonesia an exporter of a premium cigar you think uh well i mean one thing is awareness like the international cigar smokers are are aware of indonesian tobacco right i mean i've been using indonesian tobacco since 10 years right okay. and the, some of my first cigars had sumatra wrappers um and now we're actually launching a, a fairly significant project um that has a, a strong indonesian component to it yep. before i even came here just happened to be but i think that you know you have to get the message out to those international smokers that there this is a, a tobacco destination and that yep. There is a world here happening with things going on. And uh, I mean, one way other countries do that are, are festivals and events and reasons for the international people to come mm. and, you know, engage the local culture, the local smokers, you know, and that's at the end of the day, it's people coming together, right? That's yeah. that's how you learn. And festivals, events, you know, reasons for, for people to get together, smoke, eat, drink, talk. It's a universal thing. It's a universal thing. And I think that's that's truly how how you get the message spread that there's more than just some tobacco coming out of this country, right? There's a, there is a scene here. Um, and we need to get people to come and engage and interact with that scene in order to understand it. Uh, your brand has a very distinct identity. Can you tell us more about it, especially with this industrial? <laughs> this is a, this is a partners of us in Dallas, Texas, uh. that we, um, we had made that cigar for a few years ago. We started uh, yeah. and, uh, now we've our, expanded our partnership. We're opening a, um, a full full service uh, food and beverage establishment in conjunction with them down there uh, but um, the main thing about our brand identity is you know because of my background dealing with you know an antique advertising artwork and paper um, we love we love working with the um, with a lot of different styles and I always say we want to create products that look like they could be from a certain time period not just in the style of the time period so if you look across our, our product line, I mean, a lot of people know us with, you know, of Art Deco because Aviator's Art Deco and yeah. some of our other branding is, yeah. but really we work at a lot of different, very specific styles. Like e even with an Art Deco, you could break it down. Like Aviator is very sort of 1940s American industrial deco. Then we have other products that are more more European Art Deco. Uh, we have a we have products that are Art Nouveau, a new thing coming out. Petit Provocateurs is, is like classic French turn of the century Art Nouveau. Uh, we have one product that's like 18th century island colonial um, but even in, within uh, angelique is not very 1960s but yeah. but the, we we really try to make the make the branding so that it it looks like you could have found these things on a shelf or in life at that point in time versus um you know just like a nod to the style and from like an, a brand identity point of view i think that's the most important thing to us okay uh, do, do you plan to release any of them to indonesia yeah yeah i mean we're, we're we're, we have a few Vitolas on the way here, and um, as as we feel out the local market and see what people really enjoy more, we can better gauge what what might be the the right things from our portfolio to have in this region. Yeah. You tell us your favorite cigar moment. I don't know that I have any favorite moments in my history, but I I can tell you that I am a very social smoker. You know, I love smoking with people and. I love smoking when, in times when we don't have to separate or we don't have to break up the experience just to smoke. Okay. Like you and I are sitting here talking and smoking. I don't like if we had to have sit here and talk, have our conversation, then go smoke in a hut somewhere, <laughs> right? Like yeah. that's the worst. When, when your dinner or your conversation or whatever flows naturally right into the smoking time or, or they're all one and the same, those are the best moments. Uh, when we have to sequester ourselves or yeah. find some someplace to hide and do it that's that's no fun for anyone so there have been so many i mean when smoking is an integral part, part of your life it tends to just be a part of your great moments anyway and i guess maybe that's why uh, there's none that stand out 
I know you explained uh, some of your future brands just now, but generally speaking, what's next for Principal Cigars? Well, you know, what's next is obviously we need to continue expanding in, in uh, the newest region, which is Asia. But um, we also have to um, spend a little bit of time on the home front. Um, you know, we, we expanded so much outside of the U.S. in the early days, and I always want to take care of the people that, that were with us in the beginning. So, like, non-U.S. accounts have really had priority in terms of production, you know, because we're so limited. Uh, but it is time now that now that we're a little bit more scalable and we've made a lot of changes over the last couple of years to to really focus on the home front a bit. So uh, I think Asia and the United States are are the the biggest priorities from a business perspective for the next for the next um, year or two. Um, and from a brand perspective, we have you know we're just trying to get through the anniversary. We have a lot of you know eight more releases this year to get mm -hmm. through, which uh, you know. Just the launch and the promotion of all that stuff is is uh, quite quite intensive. But um, yeah, that's the immediate horizon. Get through ten releases, Asia, U.S. Ah, nice. Okay, uh, actually, this is the last question. Uh, again, thanks. No, please, man. Thank you so much for having me. Really, this was fun. <laughs> yes.